Levin Sword versus Bolganon, which is better and why? So a lot of people agree that Levin Sword is basically one of the best, if not the best weapons in the game. It has one to two range, meaning it can attack in a more flexible way. It has really good base mites. It has really good classes that deal good damage. It's magic based, so it targets enemy res, which tends to be lower. And also there's things like sword power, and it has just pretty good stats and availability. It's easy to get. It's good on a lot of different classes. Uh, but Bolganon is actually just as good. And there are actually pros and cons to these weapons. And I actually consider them side grades at this point in time. So what's the advantage of Levin Sword? You get damage scaling on sword power. But sword power's availability isn't the best. So if you are a middle game unit like Marin, Pandreo, uh, any, you know, Ivy even... You cannot get sword power until after chapter 19 when you get Roy back. So early units like Chloe, Citrine, Saline, Fram, Alir can all get sword power if they want to run Love and Sword. But they can usually only get rank 1 to 2 and in some cases 3 if you get some lucky tier 3 and tier 4 wells. So it is literally luck based depending on what, you, what kind of sword power you can get. Uh, but you can also get broken by lances but you can break axes. And at base, Levin Sword has three less damage than Bolganone. Some people, when comparing these weapons, will point out that Levin Sword is cheaper to upgrade, but you have to get it to plus three to get to Bolganone's base, so it's not even really an advantage. And the cost to get it from plus three to plus five is actually quite expensive, similar to upgrading Bolganone. So the pros and cons of Bolganone can be used by Sage and Mage Knight. So all Mage Knights can actually use Bolganone. Uh, Mage Knight has A rank tomes and then B rank in something else. So, you know, B rank axe, lance, sword, and then A rank tomes. So Mage Knights can run Bulganone. The weight on them is, the, is exactly the same. So if you don't plan on using sword power, Bulganone is generally just better. If you get it to plus two, it's similar to plus five and 11 sword, but it can't be broken by most things because the only thing that breaks it is fists. And most fist enemies are near the back line of enemy formations. So if you have your Bulganone unit enemy phasing, even just like one or two enemies, they will counterattack without being broken. And generally, in this use case, it is better. Uh, you can also damage boost with Magic Plus or Gentility, flipping to Bravery mode. And you can also get plus two slash three damage with Resonance, which is kind of expensive and not really worth it. It's not too expensive, but by the time you get Celica back, you might as well not be running <laughs> resonance but bravery and gentility is a good option for it to get it to get plus three slash five damage so you either switch modes from sun or from moon mode to sun mode on erica and that applies to all of your gentility units or you actually just keep the erica unit the erica unit engaged as much as possible so that the unit with gentility has plus and minus three damage from blue skies because they get blue skies and Erica's engaged or plus and minus five damage, meaning you deal five more, take five less. And now you can run gentility on Levin sword, but you might as well just go for sword power because you do get more damage. So it's 3k for gentility plus and it's 3k for sword power three. So you get one more damage and you don't have to rely on the Erica unit, but if you want to run a lot of gentility units, Bolganone can be just as good, if not better. So it's like a side grade, I think. I think they're both really good, but it depends on the unit, and it depends on why you're running one versus the other. Uh, so most enemies do have lower res than defense, so magic units don't always need magic fixing. So this is a base Marin that I just threw her on just so you can see the difference so that we can compare. So she doesn't have like sword power equipped to skew the damage numbers. So 30 damage in this case, uh, the might, so 16 might. Uh, Bolganone, getting it to plus two to three isn't super expensive. It's pretty reasonable if you're doing like dog farm the entire time where you just put a bunch of dogs out and get silver. So let's actually look at some of the upgrade costs. All right, so Levin Sword. So getting Levin Sword to plus five does cost you five silver, but it also costs you 42 steel. And if you want to get steel from silver, one silver equals nine steel. So if you convert silver directly into steel, 
it's basically, you know, one silver equals nine. So roughly 10 steel equals one silver. So this is basically nine silver and 4.5K. So even though it costs you steel, you can convert that steel into silver, right? So, and if we were to do that, let's go to the exchange. So we want silver converting from steel. So 11 steel equals one silver. So 42 steel, if it was 44, would be four silver. So it's, it's, it's roughly nine silver to plus, to go from plus three to plus five. All right, so I want you to remember that number and 4.5K. And then for Bolganone, it is nine silver to plus three in, which would put you at plus one more damage. They both, they would have the same hit rate. They both get plus five on the first upgrade, plus five hit. So Bolg plus three costs nine silver and 3.5K and Levin Sword plus three upgraded to plus five costs nine silver and I think it was 7.5K. Let me double check that. Oops, that's Worm Slayer. I'm sorry, 4.5k. Okay, so it's 1,000 more, but the same silver cost. So it's actually more expensive to get Levin Sword dealing more damage. Now, obviously, if you plus one it, now you're plus one damage over Bulganone. Whereas if you just plus one Bulganone, it just costs you one. So plus one in Bulg is very cheap. Uh, plus twoing it is reasonable. Plus threeing it. You know, ultimately that's five silver because you would it would be you know one to do this, and then the cost decreases. So if I do this, for example, it'll cost me three. Yeah, and then once I do that, it'll cost me five. So really, just nine silver total to have nineteen base might. Now getting it to plus four, you can do this if you have excess silver. But if you're running a bunch of units, you probably can't do that. But the option to go higher is there. Plus fouring it's probably the highest it would go. Plus fiving it is kind of crazy. That's a lot of silver. So, but plus fouring it is, is is nice if you want it. And then plus fiving it's there. But the point is to get it to get the like these weapons might you have to upgrade Levin Sword just to get it to Bulg's base. And then once you get it to Bulg's base, it caps out at plus two more. Whereas Bulg can keep going further if you want to and can afford it. So in this way, Bulg is just better in terms of upgrades. Now, if you're not running sword power, I would say Bulg is just straight up better because it's the exact same weapon. If you're not running sword power, Bulg is objectively better because it just has more damage. And the classes that you'd be running um, Bulg or Levin on. So let's go over those. So here's actually Chloe that runs, you know, sword power two, Levin sword plus four and so on. Now let's look at some stats. So Mage Knight can run either, right? So Mage Knight could run Sword Power. In this case, she's plus four damage. If she was running Gentility, it should be plus three damage, right? With Bravery. So it'd be very similar. The damage would be very, very similar. Um, so, and also the availability of Bolg. You can create, you know, take an L Fire, you can upgrade it. You can take a Fire, upgrade it to L Fire, upgrade it to bulg similar to how you can take an iron upgrade it to steel upgrade it to leaven or take a steel and upgrade it to leaven sword and the actual magic difference so like let's say you're on mage knights and you want to make a griffin leaven sword user so griffin has minus four damage minus four magic so a, and it also has one less build so griffin leaven sword is one of the best builds in the game similar to mage knight but the damage difference between a bulg on mage knight and 11 on griffin is at base the griffin has minus four damage so you'd have to run sword power two just to be at the base damage of mage knight so griffin knight can be really good on units with high magic so that the magic decrease isn't as big of a deal and the speed increase is really what helps them so they can double more consistently but the difference is there and i mentioned this because griffin cannot use bulganone at all so if you want to run Griffins versus Mage Knights, uh, you can do that, but you are missing out on four damage. Now, if you're running 11 sword on a Mage Knight, that's totally fine. Uh, but if you're not using sword, sword power, Bulganone is objectively better because you don't have to upgrade it at base. It just does more damage. So if you're not using sword power or if you're using something like Gentility Bravery to, to damage boost, Bulganone is just better. Uh, you could use Resonance, but I don't recommend it. Now let's compare Sage. Sage versus Mage Knight. Sage has plus two damage. 
Now only certain units can consistently double on Sage, and these are units that are fast with high build. Uh, in this case, this Chloe could probably get away with doing this with a weight reducing thing like Sigurd and a weight reducing engraving. You're looking at minus three speed from running Bolganon or Levin Sword because they have the same weight. Uh, but in this case, you get plus two more magic. So that's the equivalence of 1000 SP or sword power one. So Mage Knight versus Sage. If you're on like a Pandreo, say like Siege Sage, which is a build that I'm going to probably start running, um, you basically get plus two damage. So that definitely matters. Now, some people don't like speedy sages, but speedy sages are a thing and you can run them and it's totally fine. But there is a difference between these. And I mentioned this because sage is unique, like that or it's exclusive from Leaven Sword. It doesn't use swords at all. So like you couldn't just run Leaven Sword on this, for example. So it just has plus two more damage than Mage Knight. Now, most people argue Mage Knight's just better. Uh, the passive, it has higher base speed. It has one more build and it has a passive that boosts its speed. And I, I would agree that it's usually better, but there are builds that can run Sage. And this is why I consider Eleven Sword and Bolganone side grades to each other, because it depends on the use case. It depends on the unit. It depends on what passives you're running, if you want to run Sword Power or not, because Sword Power can be expensive. It's thousands of SP. And if you want to hit like Sword Power four and five, that's four to five K SP. Whereas if you just ran Bolganone on Mage Knight with Gentility, and kept the Erica engage for blue skies or switch modes for bravery, you're looking at plus three damage for 2k SP, but it also affects everything else. So it also affects 11 sword. It also affects a Thoron. It also affects like Excalibur if you want to run that. Uh, so it's a little bit more flexible and you can also get a damage reduction, which is nice too, and control that. But I do think that the two weapons both bring something huge to the table. They both can carry a playthrough. And to wrap up, I want to show my very first Ivy build before the well, like as soon as the game came out. This is my first completed Maddening run. So here is my first Ivy ever. This was my first Maddening run, the first run I ever did in this game as soon as it launched. And I ended up running Bolganon plus four on her. She was my hard carry. I did a bonded shield strategy with Lucina and Marin in this case, and it was like a flyer squad. And essentially, I just gave her speed plus four and canter. This was before the well, so you couldn't get a ton of crazy passives. I ran Lin on her, which is what she ships with. Like that's her factory default settings. Uh, she does have 10 build, and this Bolganone only weighs her down by one. It had no engraving, but I was able to easily have her enemy phase and kill a ton of things. Now with this build, she has canter reposition. She has speed plus. She has no damage fixing at all outside of Bolganone just being plus forward. And she was like my main hard carry unit throughout this run. Uh, she still is fast enough, you know, this plus speed taker. She's fast enough to get the doubling thresholds to one round most things. Uh, but imagine if I just replaced Cantor, because I didn't even really need the Cantor. If I just replaced this with like Gentility, that'd be like plus three or plus five damage. That would push her damage up even higher. And if this was running like Sigurd or something or some or Marth even, just really damage increase. Now let's let's compare Lindworm to Mage Knight. So Lindworm is unique to Ivy. This is another great use case of Bolganone. So it actually has so it has a little bit less speed. Obviously, Mage Knight is much faster. So if you don't want her running Lin, then this would be you know what you would switch her onto probably. Um, you do lose three points of magic. Uh, you lose some health. You lose a little bit of defense, you know, five defense, you lose some res, uh, you gain a little bit of dex. But the important thing is your minus three damage here. So if you're fast enough to double, the, the minus three damage is equivalent to, you know, a sword power one and a half, right? So it's like roughly 1500 SP worth of damage, or if you were running like sword power 1.5, but it's you just get it for free by being on a class. So as long as the speed, as long as you're hitting doubling thresholds and the, and the Ivy doesn't need the speed, you are better off being on Lindworm with Bulg. And you also get access to flying, which is nice. So you can be like a little bit more flexible with your attack. But the key thing here is that Bulganone, even without like sword power, like so without damage boost is usually enough to one round and to complete the game and to, you know, be consistent on the battlefield and that's really what you're after so depending on the build depending on the unit 
one can be better situationally, but generally, like I think this is like the ultimate Bulganone class because she can't use swords anyways on Linworm, and Linworm is one of the best classes in the game. So the fact that she can leverage Bulganone without a damage boost and carry, and this was before the well, so like if I were to change this build, um, I would probably, so this would be speed plus five because I could afford it, and then this would probably be gentility plus. So it should be plus five damage at all times. And then when Erica engages, she would be, you know, also minus five damage. And if you look at her defensive stats, let's see, she has 26 defense on this. She has 32 res. So she would be, you know, essentially 31 defense, <laughs> not, get, not getting doubled and 31 defense, and then not getting doubled and 37 res. That's very tanky. So the gentility build is actually very interesting because it can convert units that are already pretty tanky or pretty bulky into like even more so of tanks. So there's a huge advantage of running that that's a little bit more nuanced. It allows your units to tank a little bit better as well as deal more damage. So for those reasons, I think it can be better than sword power. Sword power also reduces a void by 10. So if you are running, you know, like Lucina engraving, which you could run on Bulganone, which does reduce your damage. But if you wanted to run like some avoid passives or Lucina engraving for plus 30 avoid or even Sigurd engraving for plus 20 avoid you don't lose 10 of that from just running sword power so I think it's a pretty nuanced thing I think it, it's a really it, it really is a case-by-case -case basis it depends on the class the unit what you're trying to do how many like what resources they're getting what passives they're running but ultimately I think these two things are side grades and I think they should be used pretty evenly I think like there's this modern, I mean, this modern, this like new idea that Levin Sword is just better. I don't think that's the case. I think Bulganone is just as good and it's kind of slept on right now. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe. Uh, I also do live streams from 10 a.m. EST to 2 p.m. EST, Monday through Friday. And you can also become a channel member if you want. There's going to be members only events where you can join on voice chat, hang out and play like games like Brawl or Brawl, Smash, <laughs> Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, like TF2, maybe some Overwatch, just like goofing off and like, you know, casual servers and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, thanks for checking this out. Peace.